Let's do a wrist check. I am wearing the day date from Rolex 40 mil on the president style bracelet. Absolutely love everything from the deconstructed Roman numerals on the dial to the old monotone look of the yellow gold. It's uh, by far my favorite piece. Now in this video, I'd like to talk about and speculate and reflect on uh, the moon swatch and the potential 50 fathoms or swatchified 50 fathoms that the swatch group is teasing. And we will find out one way or another on the 9th of September. So just a few days from now, but let's break this down. Let's take a look at this image. So we see something underwater, which would suggest a dive watch and not a chronograph that was used in space, right? Like the Speedmaster or the Moon Swatch. And then we zoom in and we see a crown and it's a signed crown. Half of it is signed with the Swatch logo and then the other half is blank. So that would suggest that there is another collaboration with a different brand that has just not been fully named right now. And uh, given the shape of this crown, it is highly likely that it will be a 50 Fathoms, a Blancpain 50 Fathoms, a dive watch, another brand within the Swatch group. And if I think about this, I'm probably more interested in a Swatchified 50 Fathoms than I am in the Moon Swatch, even though I think the Moon Swatch is very fun, very playful. I've owned a couple different versions over the past year or so. I bought first the Mission to Uranus, and then I got the Mission to Mars. I think that they're just a lot of fun for an affordable piece. And I, I, um, I'm not one of those watch collectors that gets cranky when a beloved design of mine that normally sits in the luxury price segment is brought into an entry-level offering that is available or a lot more available to watch collectors. So I think it's kind of fun. I recognize there are a lot of watch fans out there that are very not happy with this. In fact, you think that these types of collaborations devalue the Speedmaster or a potential 50 Fathoms. And you know what? At its heart, I can understand it, but it's, it's almost an elitist type of attitude. Uh, if we think about watch collectors in general, so few of us stay in the game long enough to where we want to spend silly amounts of money on luxury items like wristwatches, and we won't make massive purchases that many times in our lifetime. And I'm just talking about the average watch collector. I recognize there are some watch collectors out there that buy heavy hitter after heavy hitter. And, uh, you know, I, I applaud you. I think that's very exciting. I will live a little vicariously through you with my excitement. But I think for the most part, most people, most watch collectors, they buy a luxury watch every so often. It's not a regular occurrence. And so maybe you are saving up for that lovely Speedmaster professional. You don't know quite when you'll be able to, uh, you know, fiscally do it in a responsible manner. But hey, here's a Moon Swatch version. You recognize it's the name, it's the likeness. It is an appropriate homage. It's not the exact same watch, right? You know that there are differences, certainly. But it's a fun way to get into the brand while you save for that really great grail level piece. And so I think it's very inclusive. It gets a lot of people into this hobby. And I know several people that because of their experience with the Moon Swatch, they now want a Speedmaster Professional and they are currently saving up for one of those awesome historic models. So uh, I think it's a good thing. And from a business perspective, it makes a lot of sense. Imagine you're a business owner and for pennies, right? For peanuts, you can create a, almost a throwaway quality watch and you can create them quickly. You can come out with nine different versions easily and then sell them. And every time you create a production batch, you know that they will be sold almost instantly and you can make X amount of profit off of every batch. It's almost like printing your own money. So from a business standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. And then from an inclusivity standpoint, it's uh, very welcoming to a lot of people that are getting into watches or <laughs> you know, want to get into some of those higher priced models. So I think a potential 50 Fathoms, a Swatchified 50 Fathoms is yet another uh, inclusive type of opportunity. And I wonder, will the Swatch Group make more money selling thousands and thousands of Swatchified Bioceramic 
50 Fathoms homages or co-collaborations, however you want to describe it, versus selling, you know, several steel and titanium 50 Fathoms in the course of a few months. Certainly those cost well north of $10,000, but where are you going to make more profit? I would say it's probably more on the quantity side, the swatchified side, than it is on the quality side or the higher end side with the actual watch. So I'm just kind of intrigued with what's going on. And I'm thinking of different things like, okay, how many uh, 50 Fathoms versions is Swatch going to introduce? And will they learn from the mistakes from the previous release? Will we see online availability? And how many are they going to release at drop date? I know uh, the Swatch group laughably underestimated the appeal of the Moon Swatch when they first introduced that. So uh, I wonder if they will learn from previous mistakes. And I wonder, are we going to get quartz? Are we going to get a System 51 type of throwaway mechanical movement? You know, what are we going to get here with this? I'm excited. You know, the 9th of September is going to be another big day of news for the watch enthusiast community. And I'm all in on that. Now, uh, let me answer another question here. What if, oh, sorry, (laughs) I'm getting ahead of myself. What if the Swatch Group continued with Omega and they did another Omega collaboration, say with a Seamaster Professional or a Planet Ocean or an Aqua Terra? I wonder, does the 50 Fathoms have that much appeal? Will there be that craze for, for these potential releases like there were for the Speedmaster? I don't think it's going to be on the same level personally. But what if they continued with some of these models that would you know, cause a feeding frenzy, so to speak, at uh, the authorized distributorship or possibly online. Imagine a Seamaster Professional or an Aquaterra or a Planet Ocean. I think those might break the internet. And I wonder if that's in the works for a future release in, in future years, or at least a future collaboration, a Swatch uh, collaboration. And here's another thing to consider. Omega has vastly underused what's probably the most popular Seamaster, and that is the second-gen Seamaster Professional, the Seamaster 300. I know a lot of watch collectors just go nuts for this watch. So imagine if Omega on some sort of anniversary came out with a production variation, and then Swatch did a Swatchified co-collaboration and a bunch of crazy fun colors I think that that would be a lot of fun personally. Uh, Let me know what you think in the comment section. And if you've made it this far in the video, please leave me a like. Please leave me a subscription if you're able to do that. That really helps me out. That really helps me grow my channel. And uh, I appreciate that. So that all being said, let's discuss in the comment section. Thank you.